This place is called Crate in Hackneywick in East London. It used to be a form of print works. It's now one of a growing number of places in London which is brewing it and then serving up the goods to thirsty punters, many of them outside tonight because it is quite nice. We are going to focus on beer this evening. Just how important is it to London's economy? It is fair to say in recent years it has struggled and London relies on it more than any other part of the UK. So a couple of stats for you to take in then. Just shy of 90,000 jobs in London depend on the beer and pub sector, and not surprisingly, many of those employing young people. We have 25,000 16 to 24-year-olds working in brewing and pubs in the capital. All of this then is worth more than £3 billion to the London economy, and our beer and pub sector contributes about £1.5 billion in taxes too. And one more stat for you. London, on average, cough up more than about 50 pence per pint um, because of VAT and duty. So given all that, it isn't surprising uh, that many people see the booze industry as extremely vital. Um, when it comes to beer, the Beer and Pub uh, Industry Association have told us that actually things are looking up when it comes to drinking. Around 50 million more pints in the last quarter of 2013 compared to the same period in 2012. But actually, when it comes to the number of pints being pulled, in places like this and sunk, actually they fall year on year. So we're drinking, but we're not actually drinking here, we're drinking at home. Um, that is something that concerns lots of people. When you see campaigns in newspapers about Save Our Local Boozer, it kind of makes sense why that might be happening. So while some are struggling, why are others booming? This is Matt and Mark. They run this pub near Angel. When they took it on a few years ago, it was struggling, but they say they've managed to turn things around. When we first took over the pub, it was um, pretty dark, pretty dingy, um, dirty, to be honest. It needed a lot of TLC, to put it generously. Not quite spit and sawdust, but certainly, uh, certainly in that vein. We didn't see the accounts or anything like that, but from, to all extents and purposes, it wasn't doing very well at all. Uh, and certainly when we took it over initially, um, we kind of had a bit of a hangover from that and, and did struggle to begin with. Now, Matt is a bit coy at saying business is booming, but he is much happier with the books. So while other pubs are struggling, how's he done it? I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a secret to the success. I mean, there's no switch that we flipped to I instantly turn it around it it was just a case of um, adapting quickly and changing quickly and we had a very defined sort of idea when we started some things worked some things didn't work and I think the success has been identifying those things quickly and acting upon those things quickly I think pubs in general are struggling um, it's well, it's more of a struggle than struggling. I mean, it's, a, it's an uphill battle, definitely. Const constantly squeezing costs and, you know, boosting turnover. I mean, that's the name of the game. I think, I think the key is you've got, to, you've got to identify what people can get in the pub that they can't get at home. I think the home is the biggest, um, the biggest competition you have. It isn't other pubs. It sounds crass, but I think you'll find the pubs that are that have struggled and have closed, have failed in doing that. Um, I think the pub industry has suffered because it is run by generally middle-aged men who are all unwilling to change. And you know they've done, they've been able to. In, even bad pubs in years gone by have still managed to make money. And unfortunately, you know people's pockets have been pinched, um, and and those people are naturally going to be the first out the door. You know, it's weird you see on one page the, the problems England's having with binge drinking, and then on the next page that pubs are shutting down. So, that, you know, there should be something in between there. So people are still going out drinking. It's just about um, meeting people's needs. So Matt Ricks there saying diversification is one way to try and keep things going. Uh, Dominic Jones, you're Hi. in charge here. Um, how do you make sure you keep people coming back time and time again? Uh, I think the key really is, uh, is just being passionate about what you do. And, uh, and people, people receive that, they see that. And if they see that you really care about what you're doing and the product that you're trying to provide, then they just come back. And you don't just key. ship in the product, do you? You actually make it here on the site as well. Absolutely. Yep. Does that add to what you're doing in terms of the, the, the customer? You're, you're coming looking for something very specific, aren't you? Well, I think, uh, I think what we do, craft beer, 
right now, uh, particularly in London, is really taking off, uh, and people are taking note of it. And um, so we're kind of, I guess, riding that wave in a way. And people like to know that the product that they're getting is locally sourced. And you know, if, you're, if you're, it's coming straight out of the tanks and straight onto the taps, then they love that. You worry that you're riding the wave now, but actually things could change. You could have like a seismic shift and people want to drink more at home and less out and about. Uh, I think people will always want to uh, will want to eat and drink out. I think it's part of the part of our nature, particularly in a city like London. Uh, and um, I don't think that's something to worry about at all. I mean, we've been obviously through a global recession, and it hasn't stopped. Uh, it hasn't stopped us. And it hasn't stopped a lot of other people. So no, I'm not worried about that at all. Yeah, I detect an accent. Are you from Australia? I am not from Australia. That's a rocky, rocky era on your behalf. Uh, I'm from New Zealand. No, so everyone makes that mistake. But uh, I'm from New Zealand, mm. and uh, yeah, I've been here six years. And actually, in the time I've been in London, uh, I have seen what I would consider an awakening in terms of food and and drink. There's uh, there's just constantly more and more places opening up who are kind of clued up on wanting to just uh, good product, good food, and uh, it's it's like. It's, it's, just only, it's only just beginning, really. I think it could, uh, the potential is huge. That's more and more competition, though, isn't it? More and more places opening up. That is true, but uh, judging from where I'm from, Auckland, I mean, there's a, there's a trendy cafe on every corner doing good coffee and good food, and we have a population there of one and a half million. Uh, London's, you know, I don't know, 10 million or something like that. So the... There's, the potential is so much greater. There's so many more people that uh, it's, I think, again, there's space. There's room for quality product. And regardless of how many people do something, if you really care about what you're doing, then people will take notice of that. So it doesn't really matter about the competition. You've just got to be passionate. Dominic, thank you very much. I'll let you carry on. Uh,